This season, Harshal Patel took the equal highest wickets that any man has ever taken in a single year. 32. Let that sink in. This transient journeyman squad member with all-round skill took as many wickets in a season as anyone before him. Chances are, unless you're a hardcore fan or a Bangalore Ultra, you probably didn't know anything about him. And he's only joined Dwayne Bravo right at the top. And as you can see, only 12 times has someone taken more than 25 wickets in a season. And look at these names. The man who has bowled more death balls than anyone else. T20's first true great bowler. A few test hall of famers. Great bowlers in this league. A random South African great. And a great early T20 player before his knee went. Greats, 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 greats. And Harshal Patel. These were all incredible players, and not just for a year of T20 cricket, but usually for long periods, in multiple formats, and for their nations. Harshal Patel is none of these things. He's a very good lower level domestic player. He has a lowish bowling average in all three formats. He's stuck around this league long enough to at least show that he's not a dud. But he's never even really been a replacement level talent. Before this year, he'd never even played more than five games in a single season, other than 2015. Marshall was not bad enough to ever truly disappear, but also not good enough to play an entire season. But that 2015 year was something. It was incredible, in fact. Let me show you Ashwin Stark and Malinga from that season. And here's Ashwin. I mean, that's an all-time year. And then he played 13 games over the following four years, and in them he went at virtually 10 and over. He would come in, get smashed, disappear, come back, sometimes take wickets, get tonked again, and leave. What that 2015 season suggests is that this year wasn't a fluke. Doesn't mean that this year makes that much more sense. But something like this has happened before, albeit on a much smaller scale. Fewer wickets and fewer runs were conceded in 2015. And this year he went at 8.1 runs and over. That's not a low economy. Generally when you take so many wickets, teams tend to gear back against you a little. Harshal has taken the most wickets ever and teams tried to smash him from beginning to end. Only the Rabada and Bravo have ever gone for more than eight runs and over in a high wicket season like this. And let's ignore Lassif Malinga, who is taking the piss with his 2011 season where he somehow got this economy while bowling at the death. You can see here that there's just a couple of different kinds of high wicket seasons. The kind that Rabada and Bravo do, where they take a lot of wickets and go for quite a few runs, and the other kind, where people stop scoring off you because why bother trying? But of course, this is a bit limited because this is just 25 plus wicket seasons, which are quite rare. So I open it up to 20 plus years. And there is a little pattern here. You can see four distinct areas. At the top is gun spinners and Malinga. Then there are spinners and some incredible seam bowling years. Back here is almost all seam bowlers. And back here is not just seam bowlers, but death seam bowlers. It means that there is a group of bowlers led by Bravo and Rabada who take wickets while going for runs. And if you look at the top wicket takers in the death in a single season, Bravo and Rabada are all over this list. And you can also see Bravo's equal record breaking season. And Harshal is there. But it still means that he got a bunch of wickets not at the death. But the numbers you're looking at here are after the 14th over. But some people look after the 16th over. But I thought we could get even more specific with Harshal. So I wondered how many of his wickets really came very late, very deep in the dark death, if you will. And I found this, which shows that he never bowls early in the innings, which makes sense. But that's not the thing I was noticing. It's the fact that he has 11 wickets in the last over alone. And he's only bowled two extra overs in the 20th than he did in the 18th, but has seven more wickets. And you'd be shocked to know that twice in the season, Bravo has actually got more than 11 wickets in one specific over. Once in the 20th over, another time in the 18th. Which does tell you that by the end, wickets are easier to get. In fact, this season in the last over, a wicket comes every nine balls. However, Harshal took them every 4.9. And it's better than one and over. That's tasty. But if you're wondering why I'm so obsessed with all these death wickets, it's because I know that while death wickets mean that you end up with a higher total, they don't often help your chance of winning as much. This is Joe Harris's work from a few years back, and you can see that early wickets have a way bigger say on what the total will be or win probability than anything later on. Early wickets are gold and late wickets, well, I don't know, a different kind of medal that's not as important. In fact, they only really matter if you take a bunch in a row, which to be fair, Harshal did. He took two wickets in an over five times this season. But even then, if you're taking wickets in the 20th over, they're really not worth much more than a dot ball, even if they feel better. But the reason I point all this out is because Harshal has actually been quite great in the middle overs as well. In fact, I'd say he's been even better in the middle than he has in the death. From over 7 to 16, he's averaging under 17. And this is his record compared to league average. You can see he's way better than normal in this period. 
And this is the one where the wickets really matter. He's also way better in the death and not so good in the power play, although he didn't bowl there much, probably because of this. And Harshal has the fourth most wickets in the middle overs from the 12th most deliveries. And you can see him here on the list of the heavy duty middle overs bowlers that he's just been outstanding. On average, he's third best and he's not far from the main front runners on economy. Outside of Sunil Narayan's crazy great year and Harpreet Bra's stunning short season, Harshal's wickets aren't just from trash at the end. He's been a star in the death, but a superstar in the middle. Of course, the funny thing about this is, if you think about it, if he'd been just as good in the middle, but not taking as many wickets at the death, but going for a lower economy, no one would really be talking about him. Googlies, Quartasima, Karen, Dukes, Back of the Hand, Red, Leg Cutters, Tisra, Pink, Knuckle, White, Slider, Seed, Heavy, Bounces, Cherry, Length, Pill, Off Cutters, Old, Crimson Traveller, Kookaburra, Hard, Outswing, Second New, Off Spin, Arm, SG, Split Finger, Shiny, Leg Spin, Soft, New, Yorkers, Flippers, Wrongens, Long Hops, Reverse Swing, Half Volley, and Third New. These are just some of the names we use for balls in cricket. Well, Manscaped wants you to be as proud of your balls as you are of the ones delivered by your favorite cricketer. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawn Mower 4.0. It joined over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Insert the code REDINCA at manscaped.com. I've actually used this, um, not just something that I'm hawking for fun. And I got to admit, I thought it was a bit silly. And then I went down there and it was exceptional. I honestly feel I could bowl outswing with one nut and in swing with the other. So get 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code REDINCA at manscaped.com. Manscaped, for the man who cares about his balls as much as the ones out in the middle. We don't really value the wickets that we should in T20 cricket. And we also tend to focus on the times he wasn't so good, like the one where Ravi Jadeja completely got hold of him and almost ruined him for everyone. At that time, it felt a little bit like he'd had a good run and now a big boy had just disassembled him and he was heading back to the bench where he belonged. And this over did have some impact, but it didn't last as long as some people thought it would. And Jadeja has done this to many bowls in the last few years. He's in the top five death batters for this league, scoring at two runs a ball while rarely being dismissed. So there is that. But so far in his career, Harshal has delivered 216 overs in this league and 78 of them have gone for over 10 runs. And while 37 is a lot of runs, he's also been over 25 twice. I mean, this is just a lot of big overs. There are three ways to look at this. One is that he just gets met a lot, which is true. Another is that he bowls at the death, and this is part of doing business there. And the third is to think that despite the fact he's gone for all these big overs that probably would have ended the career of a lot of other bowlers, he keeps coming back. And in fact, he's better now than he ever has been before. That's something special. And if you're watching this video and you're shaking your head a little bit, well, that's all fair, because this is a little bit nuts. And at first, that's how I felt about his bowling all the way through the year. Well, he did well at Chennai, but maybe that pitch suited him and we'll see how he goes next. And then he took wickets at Mumbai, but they went for a lot of runs and you wondered if he could keep that up. And then at Ahmedabad, he was bad. And so at that point with the break and the resumption, you didn't really expect him to come back and be as good. Except he came back to the UAE and he was that good. If there is a pitch that suits Harshal Patel, it seems like there are lots of pitches, in fact, that suit Harshal Patel. People like me kept waiting for this to stop, and it didn't. And so we eventually had to look into why it didn't. And that's why I want to bring up Karakeya's tweet here, because he brings up a few key things that we need to discuss. Of course, Harshal's record of this many wickets, considering that he's not an international player or a regular in this league, means that, means that he probably had a little bit of luck. But I want to focus on the two comparisons that Karakeya made. Bravo gets more dip on his slower ball than anyone not delivering a back of the hand ball. If you talk to cricketers about Bravo, they mention how the ball feels like it's coming at their head before dropping to their toes. Most off-cutting slower balls don't dip this much. Look where Chahar's bat is here. This is a full toss, but his bat is a couple of inches higher than the ball. And the ball actually hits him way on the bottom of his pad, nowhere near where his bat was. That's mad drop. One of the Fizz's superpowers is the ability for him to move the ball from the straight. Not many off-cutters really deviate sideways from the surface. And Harshal and the Fizz can do that. But there's something else that he has in common with the Fizz. He has a similar distribution of slower balls to quicker balls. Basically, almost every second ball is a slower ball. And you hear former players say, oh, you could just play for the slower ball. But Harshal is bowling them 50% of the time. If there was any bowler that you could just wait for the slower ball on, it would be him. 
batters are waiting for them. They're picking them out of his hand. They are expecting the slow ball and he's delivering the slow ball. But because of the revolution he puts on the ball, it just drops more than they like and sometimes deviates off the pitch. The other thing that Harshall has is the ability to hit his Yorkers and occasionally even reverse swing the ball. And while it's not all at high pace, reverse swing, Yorkers, killer slow balls, that's a really good package. You can play for the slow ball if you want and he'll probably slip a quicker one straight by you. But you've probably come to this video to work out if what Harshal Patel did this year was a fluke or not. That seems to be what everyone wants to know. There's no way I can tell you that. What I do know is that Dwayne Bravo has had a lot of great seasons and ones where he gets hit a lot. And that's because the revs that he puts on the ball is hard to do consistently. We even saw with the Fizz that the deviation he got eventually ruined his shoulder. It's taken him years to recover anywhere near to the original level. We don't even know if Harshal is at the level of those two players. As for the luck, we don't really have a metric that tells if someone is lucky or not. But we do have control data that suggests what balls the batter was hitting where they wanted to. For that, Harshal had 34% of his deliveries go where the bloke wasn't trying to hit it. In the league overall, it was 25%. He was third on the list behind Nokia and Holder, who both played shorter seasons than him. And he was just ahead of Avesh Khan. His sky-high wicket total might have an element of luck to it. But he bowls wicket-taking deliveries consistently, bowled in the overs to pick them up the most, and had almost 27% more errors from his batting than a standard bowler. And there does seem to be a thought with Harshal that he's either great or lucky, nothing in between. But I just like to see surprises like this. No one saw this coming. And that's what made it so damn fun. We don't know what will happen with Harshal Patel from here. Will there be more of the Ravager Deja treatment? Will the missets go for six next year or will they be caught out in the deep? He won't always get reverse, but at least he can. And maybe next year he'll go back and have another bust like he did after 2015. But this was an all-time season. And even if it's just a one-off, Harshal Patel will be remembered as the man who bowled one of the most improbably great IPL years ever. How's this? He has two records from this year. The equal most wickets ever in a season and the equal most runs ever given up in one over. Those are two improbable records to match up in one season, but Harshal Patel is an improbable man. <laughs>